Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me loud and clear? Give me the thumbs up if you can hear me. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for waiting patiently. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Tracy, Michaela, Joe, Orla, Aileen, Ruth, Bernadette, Lindsay, Viv, Tracy. Woo! Two, oh, I can't even say them now. They're going that fast. So good morning, everyone. Saturday morning, shall we have a lovely hour or so, an hour or two hours, whatever it takes to have some painting this morning. So if you are brand new to this morning's class, it's an absolutely free class where we encourage you to just pick up a brush and play. You know, the results may not be amazing. We're not born artists, but we do encourage you to come and have some fun, play, and then if you're happy with your mates, you can post them. Or if not, they can go in the bin, which is absolutely fine. It is a bit of card, but we do love to play. And hopefully, the more time you play and the more time you practice, you get better and better. So, um, in today's class, we are going to do some leaves and some sort of composition with some leaves. But just going back before I jump the gun, this is a How to Craft Network. If you are not a subscriber, please click that subscribe button. We do uh, inspiration nearly every single day if we can. And we always do quick pick videos and things. So if you do like card making or painting or colouring, then it's a great place to come. There's also a little bell there as well, which gives you a half an hour notice when we are going to go live. So I'm just going to do a quick camera check in one second. Um, so a lot of people saying we don't have the gold, uh, we don't have metallic paints, don't worry, don't stress, I have it covered, we have alternatives, so don't worry about it, and I'll talk through those in a second. I'm just going to go through the cameras, just one second, just to make sure I've got everything in check. Yep. Right, we're good to go. So, are we all happy? Have we all got a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? Look at this big mug. Got a big one today. Keep me going this morning, all this one. I hope I don't need the toilet. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Yeah, any progress is better than anything. You've just got to play. Linda's got a Derwent metallic palette. Perfect. Thirsty Brush Company. They're my faves. Um, that's a bath, isn't it just? I can't breathe in when I get all this in my tummy. Yep, keep all your paintings, and what we'll do is we'll show the progress over the um, up and coming weeks. I think we've only got one week left, haven't we? How sad is that? One week left? I think it's one week. It's gone like that, hasn't it? Anyway, well, let's have some fun. So, in today's studio, you're going to need some watercolour paints. Now, I just have my standard everyday paints that I use every single day because they are good enough. Um, they're a high quality and we do supply paints if anybody does want to pop on the website and get some but I appreciate probably most of you will have paints I'm getting a lot of suggestions here about metallics twinkling H2O's have been around for years what a great opportunity to dig them out okay um, metallic paints sparkly paints confetti whatever you've got in your stash so first of all though you are going to need some basic paint watercolor paint so I've just got my two here if you have a metallic paint, brilliant. If you don't, don't worry about it. The end is not nigh. <laughs> so alternatives I have is do you have sparkle pens with some sparkling, which we can mix in with our paints, clear one, or even a coloured one? Or do you have some mica powders, okay? Or do you have metallic paints for MDF, which you can water down? Or acrylic paint, that like you can add mica. So there's lots of alternatives, okay? Gelatos, ooh, they're a bit fancy. Just dug my twinkling H2Os out for the first time in 20 years. Roseanne, that is bad. You are bad. You are bad. So, um, and pens, if you've got a white gel pen, brilliant. I've got this gold one, but to be fair, it's more orange than it is gold, which is a bit sad, but, you know, I appreciate being a, a creator of pens and things like that. It's really difficult to get exact to match but hey ho we're good to go so you will have seen from the picture um let's just show you these ones here let's just pop them on the um overhead here so let's just show you this one first so you will have seen from the picture where i did this one in sort of like purples and blues and then we did some like outline with a gold um ink on there so you've just got this one here and this is great composition for foreground and background you can see you've got leaves overlapping each other 
So we don't have a sterile sort of cluster of leaves, we have sort of composition. So even though you're in today's studio and you're going to paint some leaves and things like that, you're already painting composition, which you probably don't even realise. So that's super, super cool. So we're going to try and attempt something similar to this, okay, with the detail on there. And we're also going to try and attempt just some leaves with a lovely gold fleck overlay. Now, if you haven't got the gold and you've got a mica powder that's a green or something like that, then mix it with a green and you'll have a green metallic overlay or a yellow or an orange. The yellow um, mica one that I have, our abstract powder, you can mix that with yellow, so you'll get a gold. Okay, so anything that's going to give you a shimmer, um, what about, have you got cosmic shimmer pixie powders and things like that? They've all got a shimmer in, haven't they? You'll have some form of powder that does have some um, shimmer in there, okay? So we'll be able to mix it in with our colours and it's just to give us a bit of difference. So when we move our cardstock around, it sort of gives you that lovely shimmer and shine. Okay, so we're mixing mediums today. So we've done, we did a field of flowers didn't we then last week we did abstract poppies but in lots of different ways so you could all choose which way you liked to do them this week we're going to do leaves and then next week we're going to do a sunset Ooh, sunset hey bright reds and oranges okay so we're going to do a beautiful beautiful sunset so you must make sure you tune in next week too so question any chance of keeping this saturday paint permanent day once a month please so, David, it's a great idea, and I have been asked several times um, for more painting classes, which is fine. I, I can do that. I've also been asked for classes that you can pay for and things like that. I would just honestly say at the moment, I can't commit to anything at the moment, um, paid or unpaid. And I would hate to say yes, 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 and then me all keep saying no, no, no. So at the moment I can, but it's something I love and I know it's something that you love. So I will definitely look at it as soon as the pressure is off um, in other areas. We've got a lot of things uh, going on here at Stamps With Me. Some very, very exciting things as well, which are not spoken about and nobody knows about yet. But we've got so much exciting news to tell you about, some of which has taken us two years to achieve. Um, so as soon as the plates slow down, um, absolutely, I will do um, painting classes on a morning and things like that, if, you, if that's what you all want. Because I love it myself as well. So, yes, David, absolutely, I will, but just not yet. Okay. Um, yep, so, oh, teasing again. It, it, I'd love to tell you, but, you know, the industry is a bit... It, we have to be very secretive in these sorts of areas, unfortunately. And I can't hold my own water. But anyway, lots of exciting new things coming. So let's have a play today. Um, so let's see how many's on. Ooh. That's a double take then. Over 300 people painting. If you're not painting, don't stress it, okay? You can do it later if you want to and you want to catch up. All I will say is whilst we are painting, um, if we can keep the chat to a minimum so I can monitor questions, that's brilliant. But you can talk. I'm not saying please don't talk. But if we can keep the questions so it's questions throughout and then when I lift my um, head to have a chat with you, then you can have a chat. Is that all right? It just keeps it easy for me because the screen goes so fast. So you haven't missed much, Carol. We haven't started yet, so you're going to need some watercolour paper. If you haven't got watercolour paper and you're tuning in and, oh, what's going on this morning? Just get a grab some card, okay? So I'm going to be using the Carter, which is just our watercolour card, but whatever you've got in your stash um, and whatever you love to use, then grab some of that. So I'm just going to grab two pieces this morning. And another good tip as well is, I know I speak about this often, is, you know, these inexpensive frames, they're in the range. I didn't really name companies, but I do get in trouble, or I could. Uh, but anyway, they're in the range, um, and they're about 50p. Um, and you, as you can see, mine's absolutely disgusting, but it's always a great way to just pop it over your artwork and just see how things look different mounted and on cards. You know what I always say to you? Stick to the very end of a card. Well, if you're more into your artwork and things like that, Look how different they look when you pop them in the frames. All you need to do is pop a sentiment in there. Let's just um, try it on the overhead here. Uh, which one is it, that one? There we go. So you can see when you pop them in those frames, what a love, instead of sending a loved one a card, this is 50p and this is just your time uh, yet given the card stock. But what a lovely gift to send somebody, you know, saying, thinking of you or I've missed you, can't wait to hug you, you know. Just inexpensive gifts that people so appreciate because you've taken the time 
to do for them, okay? So, pop that in there. I mean, you could do it off to the side. Look how pretty it is off to the side. I mean, cut your card accordingly, but you know what I mean? How gorgeous. But anyway, I'm going off on one there because I'm getting excited. So, two pieces of cardstock. Now, if you, you're all going to be dashing off now, but if you have a piece of white cardstock as well, have a piece of white cardstock, any cardstock, just a, a white piece, because we're going to do some practice strokes on a piece of white cardstock. We're not going to waste our watercolour card, we're just going to grab some white cardstock and just have a play first of all. So you're all probably dashing out your chair now with your hot cups of coffee. So you're just going to need a white piece of cardstock, I'll give you the chance to get that. And as well, yeah, that's a great idea, if you've got any old frames that you're not overly you're getting rid of take the mounts out of them so a piece of white cardstock and we're going to have a play this morning so first of all we're going to do some leaf brush strokes okay so i have a variation of brushes so i've just got my regular brushes i've got two size fours a size six and a size ten okay you don't need all the posh fancy brushes i would always say encourage a four a four's a must, and if you're going to go up or down, four, six, eight, ten, four, and two. And then for your fine detail, a one or a zero. Okay, so I'm going to go with, let's go with a four today, for now. But if you've got a five, you know, you know it's not going to be much difference. It just means it's got more hair. Okay, so... Right, okay, so let's get some paint mixed. So we're doing leaves, so let's just mix some green. So just some water, okay? And we're just gonna mix some green. So get a nice puddle of green in your palette. Give it a good old mix up. So today's gonna be quite relaxed and hopefully you'll have a lovely foliage um, embellishment that you can mount onto a card or maybe pop in a frame today. So I'm just giving that green a good old mix, getting some water in my brush. And we're just going to have some fun. I'm going to show you quite a few techniques um, how to get, do some lovely leaves today. Um, let's have a look. Have done okay? Yeah. So, you saw last week when we did the um, leaves on the poppies, didn't we? So the, the tip or the easiest way I could give you is if you start at the point of your brush, Lean your brush down, push it flat, and then take it back up to a point. Does that make sense? So let's just let me just quickly show you here. So I'm going to start at the tip. I'm going to just use the tip, then I'm going to press my brush down, and then I'm going to pick it up and take it back to a point. Can you see that there? Okay, so let's let's keep going with that. So a tip, a flat brush, and then back to a point. So have a go at doing these along with me then. So start like at the point of your brush and press flat. So your brush is flat and then take it back to that lovely point of your brush. So if you want to do a line of those, so tit and see, see how the leaves come on as you get further down your line. Probably get a little bit bigger, which is fine. So all you're doing is tip push down and up and the more confident you get you'll just fly through these like so can we see that there and if you get a bobble of color in the center that's cool because that is how water coloring looks isn't it so don't mess with it oh so tip So let's do a long line of these, just in green. So you can see what color, sorry, so you can see normal cardstock does work, guys. It doesn't give you the opportunity to move the ink around like it would on watercolour card, but like I say, if, you know, budget doesn't permit and all you've got is white card, it does work. You just need to learn how to be quick <laughs> with it, okay? 
can somebody just say something on chat just to let me know you're all still there because it seems everybody's gone quiet and i don't know if it's me or if it's um everybody has literally gone quiet somebody talk to me somebody say hi perfect okay that's fine it just went really deadly silent i started to worry it's okay <laughs> love my nail varnish thank you aaron lovely avon i wish i didn't really be saying that i get in so much trouble you know if somebody if somebody caught me saying somebody's name i think i'd get fined <laughs> i'd be worth more than four pound avon uh, nail varnish i tell you fine i'd be dearer than that Okay, so have we got a line? Oh, we're all concentrating. Okay, I'll shut up. I'm going to shut up. So let's do a different one this time. So you should have a lovely line of green flight leaves. These can also be used as petals as well. Studying hard. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix. Mix a different colour this time. So you can do another green or a green blue or a pink, whatever you want. But I'm just going to go with a different green this time. So I'm just going to mix some different green. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to do very similar to this, but we're going to make them fatter. And the way that we make them fatter with the one size brush, I'm going to show you now. So again, we do tip. So I'm going to do another line of these. Okay, so we're going to do tip, push down, and then back to a point like so. And then what I'm going to do at the side of it is I'm going to touch where we started that point, And I'm going to go tip and round and back to that point. So we get some chunky ones now. Can we see that there? So start at the tip. So tip. So you're doing exactly as you have done with the top one, like so. And then we're starting at the tip again, and we're just going to go round and take it back to that point. And you'll get some quirky shapes as well. You can see that's quite a quirky shape. Don't mess with them. Leaves are never formal. Don't try and get a perfect like eye shape because it's boring. Okay, so. Let's do a, a, a few lines of these ones. So tip, flat, point, like so, and then tip. I'm just going to do another one at the side and take it back to that point. See that there? Be advertising, okay. Hopefully. <laughs> Right, so again, I'm just going to do a few of these. So tip to a point, and then I'm going to join that tip at the bottom and take it back up to that point, and you'll end up with lots of different shapes. So keep practicing. So a full line. I'm just going to keep going. Just turn it. You can connect them. You can um, let's have a look. Yeah, okay, everybody's okay. So I'm just going to do one more. We should have a nice thin petal and then we should have some chunky ones which have got a nice rugged edge which suggests we've got some different formation of leaves in there, okay? Mine don't look like Tony's. Keep going. Okay, so let's do another little line of leaves, okay? So we're just going to go back to the line number one for the thin leaves, okay? What we're going to do this time is we're going to sort of like mix the colours without knowing about it. So the two greens that I've used here, so I've used like a grassy green and then one that's got like a sort of a blue undertone here. 
I'm just going to mix them back up. So I'm just going to get this one hydrated, the, the, this green. So mix, get two of your greens in your palette or a blue and a green or something in your palette wet. Okay. You see that there? So then what you're going to do this time is you're going to pick up some of this lovely green, like so. So your brush is loaded with that beautiful green, okay? And then with the tip of your brush, you're going to dip it into the blue, just the tip. So we have green, and then we have that lovely blue just on the tip, okay? So watch what happens now. When we do the tip, and then we push, can you see how we've got blue mixed into green? We haven't even done a wet in wet technique. We haven't tried anything fancy. We've just mixed the colours. So let's do that again. So my brush is just dry. Well, it's not dry, but it, I've just taken off the excess water out of here. I'm just going to pick up that green. So I'll load my colour with the green as you would, as if you were, sorry. So load your colour with the green as if you were just going to paint in the green. And then with the tip of the brush, dip it in that blue, just the tip, okay? And then all you're going to do is, then you're going to do a upright a flat and then into a point and look at the color you get there you see that there so if you're wanting sort of um different colored leaves in your projects these are these are absolutely fantastic now if you're doing like a very spring like one you could do yellow with a tip of green so let's mix some yellow so all we're doing here is we're just practicing the shape of those leaves and we're just Sort of learning how to get different colours on our projects, which is really cool. So I've loaded my brush with that lovely yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some of this blue just to show you because I think it'll be nice. So I've got yellow and a tip of blue here. Okay, so I'm going to go tip down. Look how cool they are. You see that there? So have a play with two colours on your brush. So load the colour initially on your brush and then dip the tip of your brush into a different colour and see what sort of results you get when you drag them through the tip to the flat to the tip. And I'll give you a second to have a go at that one. So, yep, that's brilliant. So it is down to practice. Oh, lovely. Yep, so it is down to practice. So I think after some time of lines and lines of these, you will get leaf shapes. It'll naturally come. Okay, so just keep doing the tip. Push your brush flat. Shall I just try and do it a little bit slower? Let me, I don't know how it'll turn out, but let's mix a green here. So, so <coughs> just turn my artwork around here so I've got space. So I'll just try and show best I can. So basically my brush is upright here. So I've just popped the tip down. I'm going to drag it along a little bit and then I'm going to push my brush absolutely flat. Can we see my brush is flat there? And then I'm going to take it up and keep going, keep going until I get back to that point and you'll end up with some form of leaf shape. Okay, I'll try. It's, it's difficult to do it slow, but I'll try and do another one. So my brush is practically upright. It's not upright like 90 degree, but it's just off. So tip, push your brush flat and take it back to a point. See that there? So and I would just keep, while we're on this piece of card, keep playing, do some longer ones. So stretch, stretch your brush. So whilst it's flat, drag it for longer. So you've got a longer one. And then when you've got a longer one you need, take it off to the point. Can we see that there? So this time we're doing longer ones. So you're just going to drag your brush across the page for longer whilst it's in the flat position. So tip, flat, drag it, drag it, drag it until you're happy. Take it off to the point. You see that there? So let's keep going. So don't always do your points off to one way. Try and <coughs> twist them maybe. So down and up maybe. Looks like a pea looks like a pea pod. <laughs> so 
Yes, got it now. Yeah, well, let's keep going. Just a few more minutes on this practice sheet. <coughs> or, <coughs> excuse me, A4 sheet, should we say. So, yep, yeah, so keep that point. Press flat and then up. Let's get, let's get a page full of different shapes, different colours. And if you <coughs> have dexterity, which I know some people do have, and you find it difficult to go away from you, it's exactly the same concept if you turn your artwork around and come towards you. So say, for instance, if it's easier to come towards your body, you would just start with the tip here and you'd pull it towards your body, flat towards your body, and then off to a point. Does that make sense? So if you figure out which way works for you, away from you or towards you. But when you're doing it towards you, you just have to remember that when you are doing your artwork, you're going to be doing a lot of this because you're pulling your leaves towards you. And that's okay, but you must be comfortable when you're doing your brush strokes because if you're not comfortable, if you try and do them awkwardly, like I'm trying to pretend I'm in an awkward position here, watch what happens. They don't turn out quite great. It'll turn out great now, you watch. So say I was in an awkward position. They don't turn out quite great if, if you're in an awkward position. So you need to figure out, as a painter, is it easier to go tip, flat, and point towards or is it easier to go tip flat and away yeah the long ones are meant to be the hardest Kathy okay so maybe put a little curve in your in your in your lead so flat around and then bring to a point the other way you see that there so just keep practicing just get that page full of leaves. I'll give you a second all to um, get that page full. Find it easier to go top to bottom. Very relaxing. Mine look very unique. Oh dear. We've oh, got some pea pods. <laughs> Yeah, so really we've got some long ones, we've got some smaller ones, we've got some chunky ones where we did the double stroke, a left and a right. And then we've got the mix of colour ones where we put a little bit of colour. So if you're into like your abstract painting and things like that, if you do like a blue leaf with a tip of purple or something like that, it looks really, really cool. Just to add that touch of, what, what should we call it, glamour? Glamour? Already see an improvement, you will. I always do the point, Lindsay, at the stem of the leaf. So this is my stem in my mind. Then that's my leaf, and then that's to the tip, if that makes sense. But it is personal preference. So if you're working a little bit backwards, as in you're pulling the leaf towards you, um, you're still working from the stem, but you're bringing the leaf out towards the tip. I hope that makes sense. Got a lot of curved ones. We've got a lot of glamorous ones in it. Grace is doing fab. Well done, Grace. So, yeah, all good. Right. Has have you all got another piece of cardstock? Or can you turn the one over that you've been working on? We need another piece now. Okay, so we need to get these connected. Instead of floating around on that page, we need to get them connected. So you should have a full page of lovely, glamorous variation of leaf shapes on there, okay? Question, question, Margaret saying, can you do a leaf with a round top brush? You can, you'll just end up with a little bit of a different shape. You can do leaves with any shape brushes. You've got your rigger brush, you've got your fill bear, you've got... Um, your chisels you can do leaves with every single brush but you'll just end up with a different set of leaves like this size 10 let me just quickly just show you what sort of look you get with a size 10 you can if you're very careful get a similar size to what you've got going on your page here but if you use a bigger brush well it's inevitable isn't it you're going to end up with bigger leaves so let's just mix some so this is a 10 I'll just show you here. So again, I have to be very careful with the tip. The tips look like the size of a leaf and then 
You see that there? So you're going to end up with inevitably bigger ones. But if you're doing a bigger project, but you can see, I think you can see a little bit clearer there what I'm doing. So T flat. See how good this brush is because of all the ink and water it's holding. I've just got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, I probably could keep going. So credit to the brush when the brush holds the water and the ink. Still going. I find it harder, if I'm honest, with a bigger brush, though. You know, I like to get a bit of definition, although I do like my paintings to be very loose. I do like a, a little element of definition. So let's set this one aside. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, Doreen's having some dramas with her animals. Does it matter if you do from top to bottom? I seem to do better that way. That's fine. Um, you go with what works for you. Absolutely go. Just because somebody's telling you this is the way that most people do it doesn't mean you have to do the work to what suits your wrist. Um, because if I'm trying to teach something that feels very, very awkward, you need to find a way that it's not awkward because you won't enjoy it. Easier with my number seven. And that's going to be down to you guys. Um, let me just put me back on here. That's going to be down to you. In, a, in an hour and a half, we're having a little bit of fun here. But after today, you've got the video. You can go back and watch um, the strokes and things like that. But I do encourage you, try all of your brushes that you've got in your set. See what different results you get. Because you're going to get completely different ones with different sizes, different heads, um, you know. So, you know, have a play with them. You will get some good results. And then what will happen is, I've shown you just like with a size four or a simple brush. But as you play for the rest of today, you'll be like, I absolutely love doing it with this brush. And this is a number seven and it's a rigger. So what, that's, if you like doing it with a number seven rigger, then you'll find what you like. Um, okay, but until you pick up the rest of those brushes or until you try them with something else, you're not going to know. So you need to try. What size brushes in the paint palette? Are we talking about this one? Because it's a size four in this one. Bigger brush is better for me. I'm the same. I'm, I like top to bottom. So you see, you can see we're all different as crafters. We've got 335 people on at the moment. So all 335 of you are not going to like the same brush. I appreciate not everybody's painting and some people are going to try it later or just watching for fun. But you're not all going to like the same. And when we have classes at Stamps by Me, you should see the different portraits or paintings we end up with at the end of class. Some are very fine, detailed. Some people beat themselves up about not being perfect. And then you've got, um, I'm sure she won't mind me mentioning, we've got Barbarella who comes to class and she's very loose and very vivid. And when she starts out, you're thinking, oh my gosh, where's that going? And then at the end, it's like, are you joking? That is amazing. So everybody has their own style and it's really lovely to see. We're not all the same. We wouldn't do for us all to be the same. It would be a pretty boring world if we were all the same. Give me it. Linda's saying hers is a size six. It could be a six then. So four or a six. Tony, can you use a water brush? The water brush in the barrels. Now, David, you're asking me now. Water brush in barrels. I don't really use. I don't find that, I think they're a bit of a shortcut to watercolouring. They're brilliant for your backgrounds and things like that, but I don't get on with them. And I think, you know, when you start out with a normal brush and then someone asks you to change, it's really difficult to change, isn't it, when you're so used to a normal brush? But if you started out with a water brush and you know, I'm asking you to use one of these, you're probably going to find it really difficult. So stick with what you know and love. If you're used to a barrel with water in and it works, stick with it. I say, say size six in your paint. Okay, so shall we just have a little bit more of a practice instead of talking? Because I seem to be doing a lot of that today. So let's get our brush. So now we're going to connect, okay? So let's mix up some green. Get our green going again. So just mix up some green, green in your stash. Okay. 
Yep, step in it, look at it the next day, never throw it away. Just keep an eye on it and then do another one and compare. If I showed you some of my pieces of work that I did, which I was super proud of at the time, from two, three, four years ago when I was pregnant as well with Tom, I thought they were amazing. To say I'm not a watercolourist, but now looking back, I think, oh my gosh, how far have I come? And I've not even done anything. I've just been picking up a brush. Just change to the Himmy brush and my leaves are better. Brilliant, okay? So let's connect. So let's just do, um, what's the simplest way to show you here? So let's do a stalk. So you're going to use a tip, very, we don't want tree trunks. And I know it's really difficult, but we don't want tree trunks. We want like blades of grass. So you're going to do a fine line, and then we're going to come off a little bit, like so. And then here is where we're going to do tip, flat, point. Look at that, we've got a leaf on a stem. <laughs> Now, what you'll find here is people will turn their artwork around and then they'll do another tip and a wow. There are no rules. If you find that going up and over is better for you or you want to turn your... I'm just trying to show both, okay? So, let's... don't think it really matters. So, we've got two on there. So, let's extend this stem a little bit up and then I'm just going to go... Flat. You can tell I was in an awkward position there, can't you? There we go. Okay, so let's get some more what let's get some more colour on our brush. Now let's just keep going up. I know it would fall over, it's quite dainty, but let's just keep going. So let's go up from here. Let's go off to this side this time and then So if you've got quite a heavy hand, this is where on one of the occasions you really need to do your best to be delicate. <laughs> okay, so we're just joining those stems up. Can you see that there? I'll give you all an opportunity to do that. So if you've done that and you're waiting, do another one. So let's do another one while people are just playing. So I'm just going to go stem, and this is where you'll see how different they all are. So let's go up and again and round. And then let's go, let's just do a two-piece one here. See that there? So do a, like a few on a branch and then do two on their own. Irene Murphy saying, show me look, make it look so easy. Now I know Irene personally, she's a family friend and Irene's a slight tremor, which I'm sure she won't mind talking about. Um, Irene, if I was you with a little bit of a tremor, maybe try and use a finer brush and then it will not allow you to get tree trunks because I'm tipping if you've got a bit of a tremor, it's giving you tree trunks. Is that right, sweetheart? The right leaves are, that's why you need to do your factor sheet, lefts and rights, talls, thins, fats. Okay. So shall we do another one? Shall we do another one of these ones? Because that's a little bit of a cheat just doing two, isn't it? <laughs> So let's go up and let's just go off to the side and then press flat and then in one. Yep, try and pat, Patricia, try and use maybe a finer, maybe, maybe a two. The good thing for you though, Patricia, is you know where we did two, <coughs> oh, let's just show you on. You know where we did the fatter leaves, where we did, um, these ones here where we did like a left and a right and we did the fatter ones. If you use a finer brush, you might have to do the two like a left and a right, if that makes sense to make them fatter. But what will help is the 
finer brush will help with the line detail, as in the connecting lines. But you may have to do um, two, so like a left petal and a right to get fatter ones because you're using a really fine brush. So try them in all different ways, some up, some down. Yep, if you're struggling, you're thinking, do you know what am I doing wrong, what am I doing wrong? Maybe just swap your brush, buy a different brush. Nobody's going to smack a ruler over your knuckles and say, hey, 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 you must use a size 4 or 6. You know, if you've got a couple of brushes on your table, just try it with a couple of different brushes and just see. Because it might not be you, it might actually just be the very fact that you're not getting on with the brush. Just changed your brush. Well done, Jives. you're probably thinking when are we going to get to do some painting it's really important that we just master this element of it because you'll end up with just a big blob on your card if we can't master so um can't master sort of how we do the leaves if that makes sense so i am spending a little bit of time on this because what will happen is your work will come to be come together pretty quick so sue's just swapped out for a size three much better okay brilliant Now you see these sorts of compositions here where you've just been playing. If you, I'm not asking you to do it now, but if you have a smaller brush and you have a red, some red in your palette, if you pop some little red berries in and around this hand-painted Christmas card, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to dis distract, but if you just did a little twig with a cluster of little red berries and stamped, Merry Christmas or Happy New Year. You absolutely got your own Christmas cards. Why not paint your own this year? You know, yep, yeah, we're having a company and I make stamps and dies for Christmas. Yes, it's brilliant. But, you know, sometimes that personal touch is incredible. Leaves are improving. Oh, my gosh. We're doing well. So honestly, let's just go back to me. So honestly, this morning, who already feels a little bit more confident? Put your brush down. Who already feels a little bit more confident knowing that's how watercolorists do their leaves? Yes, it takes practice. But did you know that that is how easy it is? And did you know that all those different shapes come from a tip to a flat to a tip in different, different ways? better than last week me who f you feel great already so this is this is what it's all about this fills me with joy okay so when we make our cards and we do our artwork if you're brilliant at leaves not all artwork has to have flowers and if you do want to incorporate some flowers we have some cheap stamps remember where we can add flowers until we understand how flowers are done but um it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant so and like i've just explained to you cut do a page full of them, cut them down, tags for your Christmas cards, um, birthday cards, any, anything getting better. Feeling it, Tony. Feeling it. Billions feeling it. Oh, it makes me feel great. We're already on week three. Could you imagine if we did like a 12-week program? Improving. Definitely improved from 10 minutes ago. Okay. Okay. Let's get some watercolour cards, shall we? Come on. So over the course of today, just get some scrap card and um, paint lots of different um, leaves in different ways, lefts, rights, talls, bunches. Um, in fact, no, sorry, we've got to do one more thing. My apologies. So if you just bring your artwork back in here. So now what we need to do is we need to, yes, they're beautiful. They look nice, very stagnant, though. What we need to do now is we need to build composition. So some are in the back and some are in the front. So let's just show you how I do it. Very, very easy. Now you can go same colour too. I feel really chuffed. Oh, that's made me day, that Jackie. Well done. 
finer brush works can't can't get it. So, what brush are we using, Sue? Confidence growing, excited, getting better. Brilliant, brilliant. The key to it is that getting that fine line. So, because let me just quickly show you. Um, if you have a chunky line, look what happens. It's pretty ugly. So I'm just. If you can't get that fine line, you need to practice. It's the only thing you can't get away with. So if you do a chunky line like so, look. Looks like a weed. Look at that. So you can't, you can't sort of get away from that. You've got to try and be as gentle as you can. We don't, I call that a tree trunk because it's chunky. So you need to um, try and look like sweet pea leaves. Nice. Confidence growing. Four. So you're using a four, and are you? Is it just normal cardstock you're using at the moment, Sue? I've done a fine line. <laughs> she's way. She's done a fine line. Combining two colours really good. Yeah. So when you what when you see these like paintings on, and you think I'd never be able to do that, but you can. It's just a bit of a technique, isn't it? Getting that brush. With that, yeah, struggling with fine lines. Now I can't really help with that, other than maybe try a fine. Find a brush, Sue, or try and lift your elbow up, which is going to allow you to be a little bit lighter, like so. Elbow up in the air, like so, and that sometimes helps. I can't really. You just need to um, try and be a little bit gentler. It comes in time. Persevere with it, okay? Right, so what we need to do is Ignore that one now, because that was just an example. Let's just paint some leaves over these ones here, okay? So let's just get some green. I'm just going to use the same green. Right, so just, just watch for now, and then you can have a go in a second. So I've just mixed up some green here. Okay, so if it helps, you can turn your artwork around. But I'm just going to paint a leaf here next to this one, but I'm going to overlap it. So it sort of comes from the same area, but it's going to have, so there's going to be two. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to join it with that one there, pull it out, and then I'm just going to go over that one. Can we see I've got double leaf there? Just turn that round here. Can we see here? So now we're starting to fill those spaces. So let's pop one in here too. So just watch for now. So I'm just going to do one in the centre here. So I'm just going to do my tip as we have been, the tip, and then I'm going to push it down. You see how it's sort of over, it could have been done with a bit bigger, but you see how it overlaps. So let's just do one up here. So I'm going to do one straight up next to that one that we did there. And we see, so exactly the same, but don't be scared of the one you're overlaying. Pretend it's not there, okay? Pretend it's not there. That's probably a great thing to do. Um, so let's go here. So I'm going to start here, actually, at the tip of this leaf here. So I'm going to go point. You see now how we're sort of building a, a branch rather than something that's floating. Too much water on your brush. All you need to do, sorry, I should have covered that. I have said it every week and a lot of people have um, talked about it. Is when you pick up your colour, sweetheart, have a piece of tissue. Sorry, this is my error. I should have told you. Then when you dip it in your paint, if you've got too much water, just pop your paintbrush on its side into your tissue and it'll take away the load of water. And then you've got your paint on your brush, ready to go. So Caroline's saying she likes a size 4 sword brush, which gives her a sharp tip. Now, that's brilliant if you have a sword brush. And I would suggest don't go out and buy it specific. Master, master how to do it with the simple brushes that you have in your sash, if you enjoy it. Um, and you're thinking, do you know what? I really love this. I really, really want to, you know, give this a good, good shot. Um, then go out and buy the brushes, okay? But I would say at this point, you don't know if you love it, if you hate it, if you're getting on with it. If you're anything like me, you'll be hooked after the first one. <laughs> so we can see how we've got a build-up going on here. Shall we put a build-up in this little one as well while we're all practising? So... Just pick up some of that green here. So let's just do one. Let's just do one coming out of the top of here. So I'm just going to do a fat. I've got, I've got loads of colour on there. See that there? 
and then we'll do one coming out here. So I'm just pretending that that other leaf isn't there. I'm just adding another one. So we're just building up those spaces. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll just give you some time to do that one. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Much better with a size three. Still struggling with the lines too. I keep practicing, sweetheart. It doesn't come, it might come fast to others. Um, you know, brilliant, it made such a difference lifting my elbow. Yeah, just, ooh, it is practice as well, Sue. So just stick with it, sweetheart. If you're enjoying yourself, then the encouragement is there to stick with it. If you're absolutely hating it, absolutely hating it, and you know it's not for you, then it's time to give over. But I think if you're enjoying yourself, you know, perseverance is key. Now we'll do fine lines right, not left. Uh, Lindsay, I'm not very best at the left left ones either, as you can see. <laughs> Looks a bit like seaweed. What's all that about, Jan? <laughs> Question, is the second green dark? No, it's the same green. It's just that, obviously, the one underneath has dried, so it's dried two shades lighter, which is what happens with the watercolour. Better check what time I'm on, on that. Oh, we're okay. We're okay. Three's good. Getting on with a three. Brilliant. Lifting elbows, that's brilliant. I wish we had like a camera where you could just all hold it up to the camera so I could see. So I go, oh, that, that's good, that's good. That'd be good, wouldn't it? That would be fast as a zoom though, wouldn't it? I wonder if we could ever do that. Looking good, looking good. Right, shall we try a masterpiece or several? Are you ready for a masterpiece? Any tricks for left-handed? Grace holding her brush quite near the bristle of the brush. Don't know. Anybody, anybody else left-handed? Let me just try and paint a leaf left-handed. Oh, instantly I've put my little finger out. Can do it, but I pop, pop, pop my left finger out. Yes, yes. I don't think you'll get mine on Zoom. <laughs> uh, Elaine's saying she's holding hers quite close, so I'm left. Yeah, she has her finger out. How crazy is that? How you put your finger out? I think that's just a balance, maybe. But I can do it, and they're as good as my right ones. Just feel a little bit slower. My leaves look like leaves. It's great. Well done, Sue. You'll, you'll all be painting leaves. That'll be it. I'm just going to get a flood of leaves all on the Eureka fan page today. Getting there with a brush, changing moving card went. Yeah. Um, and you need to twist the card as well. Grace, twist your card if it's helping, you know, move your artwork around, don't have it stagnant. The difficult thing with that is, if you're twisting your work, when we come to do background washes and then we paint, it's going to be taped down. So, uh, maybe when you're taping your artwork down, if you do twist your artwork, just a bit of tape top left, so you can just quickly untape it and twist it round like that, and then un untape it and twist it round like that. Is that all right? But yeah, I'm so pleased with everybody. I haven't seen your work, but I, can't, I get a sense that you're all sort of progressed already. Tony, can you do overhead? Yep, of course. I need a bigger mud yet. Mug, mine's gone cold. Yeah, oh, great idea. Hazel's just said there, Ch tape it to a chopping board. You know, an inexpensive chopping board. Twist the chopping board. Hey, w one with a handle would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
So, so from today's practice, how are we all doing? So this is what we've been doing. Okay, so we're going to do something like this, okay? But we're going to incorporate uh, a metallic colour over the top. Now, if you haven't got a metallic colour and you haven't got the alternatives, i.e. to mix with a sparkle pen, or mix with a bit of mica powder or a metallic paint that you can dilute down. Don't worry, we'll just do it in two colour waves. So we'll do a green with a blue leaf on top. It doesn't have to be metallic, okay? So we just, I'm not doing these classes to cost anybody any money. So I would hate for you to think, I've got to go out and buy, you haven't, okay? Just make do with what you've got. And then in time, if you like what you've done, you can buy some metallic paints or, you know, confetti, whatever you want, okay? Emboss plate, yep, on tape, brilliant. So, come on, let's tidy our stations, let's get on with the masterpiece. So, we need a piece of watercolour card, and I'm using a smoother side because it's easiest. Okay, so watercolour card, yep, almost touching the paper, that's right. So, let's do a leaf clustering green. This, so, this is your masterpiece, guys, no mistakes. <laughs> I'm only joking. This is the expensive paper. <laughs> oh. Right, so let's bring our palette in. So let's paint a lovely composition now. I'm just going to do a basic composition, as you've just seen on that page there. And then what we'll do is we'll paint the missing leaves in in a metallic colour. But if you haven't got metallic, as I've explained, um, we'll swap it out for a different colour, maybe a yellow or a blue or a pink or a purple, and you'll end up with something quite abstract, okay? So... Is, there, is anybody using um, a sparkle pen or uh, mica powders? Is anybody mixing their own or are we happy just to use a second colour? No pressure. Come on, Michaela, you can do this. No pressure. Use a lazy Susan. <laughs> I'm using smooth, Angela. Smooth. So let's get some green on here. So again, if your card is flooded and you end up with too much water, take your tissue, pop your Pop your brush on your tissue and it'll take the excess out, okay? Using a sparkle pen, okay? Not yet, we don't need we don't need confetti or sparkle or anything yet. We just need our green from our palette, what we've been using all morning. So, let's sort of, let me just bring into shot. Let's just sort of replicate this one, shall we? Shall we just go with this one for now? Okay, so what was just our practice sheet? So grab your practice sheet. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go up our card. So, again, no tree trunks, very light if you can. So, up. And then we're going to go round, and then we're going to press flat. And then we're going to bring it off to a point. You see that there? So, we'll do it step by step, and hopefully we'll end up with a lovely piece. Okay, so that's one leaf. Acrylic paint is okay, metallic paint is okay, you're just going to have to dilute it down with some water, it is water based. Inca gold, yep, I think that should be fine, Confetti, so they're all fine, you're all good to go, mica for me. So Sue, when we come to it, I'll explain how, if you're using alternatives, what to do, okay? So we have one leaf, okay, let's pick up some more green. I'm just going to extend my lovely little line here, and I'm just going to go and do another one. So very fine, and then this time go a little bit further out. See that there? So take your time. It's not speed painting. It's not a race. I think you get better brush strokes if you go a little bit slower anyway. And I'm just going to keep going off to the right for now. I'm just going to go up and do another one. I've got three. So because you're all quiet, I know you're doing it, so I'm just going to carry on. So let's do another one. So I'm going to do one quite close this time, so I'm not going to go as high.
and then from this one here I'm going to do I'm just going to turn my artwork around because it's just going to be easier for me I'm just going to do one from this tip up here so tip flat and out to the top see that there Very wonky, that's not a bad thing. We'll connect them, don't worry. So, if, like you say, if it's easier for you to turn your artwork around, please do so. So, I'm just going to do one from this. So, we've got a little gap in there. So, I'm just going to do my um, stem from here this time. So, I'm going to go around and then I'm going to. So, can you see how that stem is between those two there? I'm going to do one from that same one as well. I'm going to come out. What it looks like so far. Can we see that there? I just find it easier if I turn my artwork around, that's all. So we're painting just a lovely sort of cluster here. I'll do another one from here. So we're just getting our initial green leaves over, sort of, as you can see, can you see how my left ones are different to my right ones? Albeit I would like them to be my, like my right ones, just bear in mind that no two leaves are the same so the very fact that my left ones are different to my right ones makes my artwork look a little bit more realistic so don't be hard on yourself if your left ones are a little bit they are harder when you're so used to going right so pop another one in Okay, and then let's just pop one more in. And I'm going to do it in line with this one, and I'm going to do it out like so. I'll try and mirror image that one across there. It might not happen, but I'm going to try. So I'll let everybody get to that stage. I'll leave it on the overhead so you can see exactly what it's doing. Yep, I've got leaves. Brilliant, Elizabeth. And the very fact that it's not up very straight is brilliant. They just don't grow, you know, straight. Mine's a bit small, it's okay. Better to go small, then when you've got the courage, you can go bigger. Okay, so hopefully. Mine's small too, it's okay, small, it's fine. So let's do some, so as we did here, let's add some fillers to bulk it out a little bit, okay? So I'm going to pick up some green here. So if you want to watch first, and then you can sort of um, replicate. So up from this very stem here, so we don't want them all connected to the main one, do we? We want some coming off here because that's more natural. So I'm just going to do a little one coming off this one as well. I'm just going to do a little one. So that's actually coming off that stem. Can we see there? Not the main one. So <clears throat> I'm going to do one there, and then... I think I'm going to pop one in there as well. 
I've got quite a big space in there. So from this part here, you can see there, we've just filled that little space there. And again, this is where you could just have some red berries. Um, you've got instant, you know, handmade artwork, which you can be super proud of. Yeah, it's a bunch of leaves given. But, you know, as you all know, there is a fine art to mastering something. And you've seen all the leaves and things. And like, I wonder how they do that. Well, now you know. Now you just need Wow, I did it. Well done, Phil. So we should have sort of like a little a little composition with our leaves, okay? So let's do another layer on top and add some gold. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I'm really pleased with it and I don't want to spoil it, I do encourage you to go for it because you can always go back and replicate this again without the gold, okay? So let's just show you some alternatives. So if you're using mica, all you're going to have to do is just take some mica so you can keep painting if you've got metallic paints or sparkle paints already. So I'm just going to mix some yellow. On my here, I'm just going to take some of the lovely mica and I'm just going to add it in. And I've got, I've got my gold or metallic paint, okay? You don't need too much mica, tiniest amount. And it, it is sparkly, okay? So that's one alternative if you have mica. You might have your twinkling H2Os or whatever you have in your stash. So that's one way. A second way is to, again, take some yellow. If you have your sparkle pens, your clear ones, mine, gossip, tonic, do some sparkly ones. And then all I'm going to do is drop a few spots of the sparkle in there. I'm just going to mix it up so I have another sparkly yellow. So two ways to get sparkle. I've metal or if you have metallic paints which you know you paint onto your mdf just water it down it's metallic um anybody else think of any other ways people could get them if they haven't i think that's probably what you can do really right okay so let's move on to the next stage so if you have to mix your own you're going to mix something with yellow okay so if if, say, for instance, you've only got gold mica or silver mica, just do your leaves in silver. It's a practice, remember? Okay, so just because I'm using gold doesn't mean you have to use gold. Use what you've got in stash. So I'm going to use my confetti ink. Um, but I might mix some of these in as well because they're going to be just as good. So let's just um, get some water in here. So I'm just mixing some colour up here. So all we're going to do is we're just going to give our card a lovely bit of shimmer and a point of difference when we twist it in the light, okay? So it's exactly the same concept. You just need to mix some of the colour in whatever format. Um, Kathleen's starting again. That's absolutely fine. Start again. So I'll just pick up some of this lovely gold. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, from the tip, say, let's go, let's go in between here. I'm just going to paint a gold one. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I've just got a different colour on my brush, so I'm going to go gold, and I'm going to overlay the gold. I'll show you that there. There we go. The gold over that green. You know how we did our overlays here? How we worked the two on top of each other? That's exactly what you're going to do with this one. I'm just going to fill in some of the gaps with this beautiful gold. So if you've mixed your own, you're literally good to go. So let's do a gold one up here. I'm going to do one from the top here, so I'm just going to do too much paint on me there, too much water. I'm just going to be as careful as I can, and I'm just going to bring it down. I'm just filling in some of those lovely gaps with some paint, and I'm overlaying some of them, and I'm missing some of them. So. You see that there? So <clears throat> I'm going to pop one in here and I'm going to overlay a gold one straight over that green one. So if you are watching first before you actually put in paint to paper, that's fine. So 
do a thin one down here and then I'm going to do a really big gold one here. A little one here. The one that I'm using, sweetheart, is gold mine, but sunshine is pretty much um, the same. Just got a, a, a touch of orange in the sunshine one, but you'll, you can get away with it. There we go. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that to there. I'm just going to take my practice run and I'm just going to use some of the ones that I mixed myself just to see what effects I get, just to make sure I'm telling you you can do X and it does actually work. So I'm going to use the one with the mica and the yellow. So whilst I'm doing this, you can keep playing. So I'm just going to do... Probably need to mix it a little bit thicker. But it does work. It's got a lot of shine in it. Yeah, it's got a little bit of shine in it. Use the one with the sparkle pen. If your green's not quite dry, don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. It is a practice run. But if your green's not quite dry, you will get a run. But I think it'll still look pretty regardless. Oh, Roseanne's a very droopy. <laughs> Gold is better than the green. Brilliant. Worst one so far. <laughs> oh, what we like here. Don't worry, we're going to do another. Well, let's have a look, see what. Um, so, let's just see if this all. So it's pretty cool guys and then this is the one which which is a practice sheet where we've used the lovely um mica and sparkle pen and you still get a shimmer look you'll still see the sparkle in there very sparkle just me How are we all getting on? Mine's very tall and slim. That's fine. If you, when you do tall and slim, but if you do, even if you do tall and slim, great thing is that mount. It's really important you grab a mount. If I'm going to sell you to spend 50p today, it's going to be on a mount. Let's look what happens when you pop it around your artwork, guys. Let's just show you. Look at that. Pop that mountain around and you can do do it from the bottom. It's a bit wet, so I'm just being careful, but you know, do the painting to go in a mount, it looks thing. So if yours is tall and thin, it's still gonna look incredible in a frame, you know. You know, don't be hard on yourself. It's you know, we're all just having a punch at it really. We're not trying to be, you know, gallery artists or anything. Uh, just trying to get something that looks like watercolour pieces.
Right, so some of you have had success, some of you haven't, but that's going to happen with practice, okay? So let's move on to the second one. But the second one, we're going to go completely out there. We're going to step away from green because you can get some beautiful results when we use some more vibrant colours. So another piece of watercolour card this time. Okay. So let's just leave that one in shot for now so you can see. And we're going to stick with this theme because I think you're all enjoying it. I'm not going to overcomplicate. Um, so if you had a tall, thin one before, keep that in mind for this next piece, okay? So... So if your yellow ones have spoilt it this time, then next time stop when you're happy. So we're just trying to show you texture on these, but next time if you get to a point where you think I'm really, really pleased with that, stop. Start another one. And then you might want to take that even further. Okay, so let's move that aside. So let's bring in our palette here. So this time I'm gonna you can pick go for what colour you want today. So shall we do some pinks and some purples this time just to chop it up? So I'm gonna mix some pink. Get some pink going. We are nearly coming towards half past 11, so I'm sorry if I'm keeping you, but I really just want to keep going. So hopefully you can all stay. So we've got the purple. Let's mix some purple. Mix some pink. Now, you would never mix your watercolours with musty water like this. You would always have a clean water as well. But whilst we're all just playing, an understanding itself. <laughs> what do you mean, fill turn down leaf at the top? Which one? I don't know what you mean. What do you mean, sweetheart? I've used A6. Brilliant. That's a good point, actually, that, Lindsay. If you're, if you're going too big for your boot, use a smaller piece of card. It stops you from going huge. <laughs> Lindsay's using A6. She knows herself well. Uh, but yeah, um, use a smaller piece of cat. Oh, Sue, don't be disappointed, sweetheart. We don't expect everybody to get it first time. It takes perseverance. Maybe the next one in some multicolours you might enjoy. Looks good, but small. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to our second one then. So maybe we won't, you can use a gold if you've enjoyed it on our second layer, but maybe we'll use a different colour, um, watercolour this time, so people who didn't have the metallic before can try a different colour. So let's go with pink. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to do one creeping left and over. So, yep, we can all paint a picture here, but we're going to just do it as a creeper here. So I've got my brush loaded with some pink and I'm just going to do a line of pink uh, like a creeper coming in and I'm just going to go okay so we've all sort of got our um, lovely lovely masterpiece coming together already just with <laughs> one leaf okay so remember when we did the technique in our like practice where we tipped put the tip of our brush into some purple now you can, while that's wet, you can drop some purple in there if you want to. But if you like the technique this morning where you just drop a tip of your brush into the colour, you can do that too, okay? So, food for thought there. I might do that on my next one. So, again, pick up some pink in my brush and then I might, let's dip our pink, dip my, this is the thing is, then you're going to get some purple in there. There we go. So it's just on the tip here. This looks very wet, but I'm going to go with it. So again, I'm just going to do another one very carefully. You see there? So you get the mix of the pink and the purple there without any great shapes. So I'll just drop a bit more purple in whilst it's wet. You can do it opposite, Tina. Go for it, sweetheart. Oh, I know what you mean, Phil. I'll have so to do this. Oh, my um, Alexa's wanting to talk to me again. Sorry about that, guys. So let's just move this over. So I do tip flat and then tip. And then on the tip there, I just do a 
Oh, I'm sorry about my... Oh, I've got Moana. Let me just show you what's happening here, look. Oh, I'm getting Moana. I don't know. TV remote. It's just one second. Let me just find the remote for this TV. I'm going to turn it off. Oh my gosh, I've got that many remotes. Sorry, I've just turned it off. Oh, gosh. Not a good tip. Can you all still hear me? You know what happened then? I switched it off and everything went off. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go, the start of my day. You can all see me. <laughs> so let's keep going. Don't touch technology, I swear. <laughs> so let's carry on. We're all still here. Whew, thank goodness. So let's carry on our beautiful leaf so this time i'm just going to take um the pink i'm just going to go from here really so it really really doesn't matter where you go from because they're all leaves growing different ways going different ways growing different ways okay so i've got a nice pink one going up there so if you are following me exact that point there comes from sort of that the point of that lovely petal there So let's carry on. Let's get some more coming from up here. I'm just going to go from that point again, very gently with the tip of that brush. And I'm going to just drop a bit of purple in there because we have got purple in our others. Not too much though. You know how we dropped the colour into our abstract poppies, wet in wet. I'm just dropping that little bit of purple into there. Let that work its So what we'll do is we'll do one from here and out. So it just stretches our design across our page. So I'm just going to take some of the pink again. So I'm just keep going. So don't worry if yours isn't exactly like mine. Um, it, you don't really know it yet, but you're just practicing your brush stroke. As you can see there, that wasn't very wet, but it's okay. I'm going to go with it. See if we can get some purple in there. If you sort of get this br dry brush technique where it's sort of scraped across the page, it's okay. It looks really cool. Have the confidence to leave it. Let's put some purple in there. Are we all so far? Okay, so let's do another one. I'm going to go from that tip again, and I'm just going to go up and across here. I'm going to guess. Again, not really enough water on my brush, really. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going so I'll get some more pink here so I'm going to go from let's go from here shall we because it look a little bit better so very delicately out and then 
clearly not got enough water going on here. Come on, Tony, mix them up. Stop being tight. <laughs> and then I'm just going to pop one. I'm just going to turn my artwork around here. And I'm just going to go from this one here. I'm just going to pop a little one in there. See that there? They're all going in different ways, which is cool. And then I'm just going to pop one. I'm just going to drop some purple in there. A little bit of purple in these pop ones too. So we've done one that's going that way, okay, so what we're going to do now, is we're going to turn our artwork this way, so it's upside down, and we're going to do a little one here, okay, and you'll see why in a second. Okay. So we're going to do a new, another one, but a littler one, okay, so I'm going to do, again, just a very fine line, out, and then And then I'm going to do another little one here. Make sure your brush is wet. I'll just draw on another, draw on another. Okay. Thank you, Jan. I'll see you later, sweetheart. Have a lovely day. I'm just going to drop a little bit of purple into here while it's um, still a little bit wet, just to get that colour come through on both, so they're both matte. Not too much. Then we'll do one more on this one. Make sure I've got my brush loaded, which is I'm having. It's a bit of purple in.
Okay, so we'll keep going. So we're just going to do, we've got our large one there and we've got a small one here and then we're going to turn our artwork this way. Which way is better for people? In fact, no, we better not. If you've got two there, you need to let it dry. So this one should be nearly dry. And then we can add some overlays on top to bulk it out. Now, if you're happy with what you've got so far, leave it. Okay, absolutely leave it. Okay, but we are going to bulk it out a little bit. Don't matter, it's just, come on, come on, come on, come on, it's a piece of watercolour card, it's not the end of the world. I need to let this dry before we can do anything. And I haven't got my heat gun, so. Push it on. <laughs> so how's everybody getting on? Gone too far up. Don't worry, we'll fill the gaps, Barbara. I'm just leaving it on the overhead so people, okay, brilliant, okay, brilliant, mine is pants, oh dear, <laughs> I've got a postage stamp, <laughs> tiny ones, not too bad, this one isn't good, oh gee, oh Mandy's saying she feels much more confident now she's seen how it actually is done, well done Mandy, looking lovely Tony, So let's just show you whilst you're all just having a little really dally with that, let's just show you a couple of things then. So I'm just going to go back to my green one while that one dries. Didn't go bigger, still small. Stick with small if that's how it's going, if you're confident. You know, master the small. I'm just going to quickly show you how. Your masterpieces can quickly look like lovely, lovely gifts. So thinking of you here, I'm just going to offset it slightly. I pull it down a little bit. I always like my sentiments connected to my artwork. It's personal preference. This is not sticking now. Find one that is. The other ones are too big. Try right again. You watch this stamp, it's going to fall off this door right onto my artwork. Oh no, I'll get away with it. This one's all better. Yep, yep. Add some flats to this one. I'm just waiting for that other one to dry. I'm just literally going back to this one just to show you how cool it looks when we get our sentiment in. We had a few little gold splats or green splats in anybody's case, whatever you've got. And then if you want to frame it, or if you want to pop it on the front of the card. You see that there? Hold it up to the camera. It is wet, but I will hold it. Now, hopefully, you guys will have something to replicate. 
or something similar to what's going on here. Can you see those splats? So they hide a multitude of sins as well. Really, really pretty. Okay, so let's go back to our pink one. So with this one, we're not going to do the gold, I've just decided. We're just going to overlay with another colour, because I appreciate not everybody's got the gold. So this time we're just going to go totally purple, because we've got pink and purple, now we're going to go purple. So let's just fill in these gaps. I'm just mixing some purple here. So you know how we did in our practice sheet? We did them some on top of others, very carefully, didn't we? And we did some on their own. So let's fill this gap here. Okay, so I've got my brush loaded with purple here. So we're just going out from this stem here and we're just going purple. Filling in those gaps. And then I'm going to go, where are we going to go? I'm going to go here and then I'm going to make sure that this purple comes over this pink one. So we've got like a little bit of composition going on. So. So what will happen is this will dry purple and you'll get that lovely pink undertone underneath. <laughs> so we're just pulling out some of those lovely stems and we're building some on top of others. Now if you enjoyed the um, gold metallic or the silver and obviously you can go and revisit that one as well it's filling in those spaces do some small ones i'm going to go down to this one next So Roseanne, that's suggesting is that you don't have enough water in your brush. Brush sprays out. They don't have bits sticking out. I'm not sure why it will not work. Keep back. Try and add a bit more water to your brush. See if you can get longevity in your stretch. Sounds weird, doesn't it? You know, in the downward um, position, then up to the tip, you might have not enough water in your brush to just give you that edge. Add a bit more water. See what happens. My double leaves are better than single. Brilliant. Same problem, Rose. Yeah, add a bit more water, guys. See what we practice on your practice sheet. So I'm not going to add any more purple for that because I think it looks quite pretty. Now, I mean, if you wanted to experiment and you wanted to play, I just pick up some of this yellow sparkly. I could just add some sparkle in some of that purple if you wanted to, to give it a little bit of difference in the light. But, you know, have the courage to add. It's, it, it's not taking that long, really, has it? You're not going to ruin anything. You can always do it again. So I'm just going to get some of this purple here, and I'm just going to add a few splats. Not a lot, just a few. And don't forget the splats pretty much disappear, so have the courage to add a few. So I've got a bit of purple on there. Let's go with a little bit of the pink. I'm just going to plug my gun in because I really do want you to see the results. 
open them because I have just one second. I really do want to, let's have a look what's going on here, see if I've got a card blank. Show you whilst you're all playing. I'm just going to trim this piece of artwork down that we've done here and I'm going to mount it onto this craft coloured card and then I'll dry that as well. So um, just to show you that your creativity will pay off if you've got the perseverance to just stick with it and um, if, you get it, if you don't want it in that sort of frame, you can um, pop it on a card blank, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm just trimming this one down. If you wanted to mat and layer it onto some gold mirror board as well, then you can do that. I'm just doing this while my other one's drying, and hopefully you're getting something nice come together yourselves. Could wrap a nice twine bow across there with a lovely twine. Twine bow as well, guys, so don't think, oh, just because it's a watercolor piece. It has to be. Give it a second to grab. That's quite pretty on the craft colour card. I'm just going to dry this one now with my gun because I have just plugged it in. <laughs> Just to push it on a little bit. So, just a very quick one, some alternatives you can play with this afternoon. If you have a gold gel pen, you can outline um, the leaves, and that's what I did with this one, albeit it's a different shaped leaf because I didn't really cover this, but can we see the leaves on this one? Can you see how I outlined it in the gold pen? So if you've got gel pens, if you've got your Secura jelly roll pens, they will work, outline your image, put some detail in some of them, add some splats, so that's one way. If you've got a white gel pen, you can add detail with a white gel pen as well. They look equally as beautiful. Um, your metallic paints as well, overlay as well. Or if you've got like your glitter glues and things, you can add sparkle on top of them. So let's come back. So did everyone enjoy that one? When should I have stopped with leaves got carried away? <laughs> So um, you can see here, look, I'll just turn this to the side, hopefully uh, my camera, just turn this one up, just see if my cat, wait till my camera cat, and then I'll just show you. Now this isn't the correct camera, but there we go, so you can see, look how gorgeous that is. That's just us practicing, guys. So hopefully you will have something that will look quite cool. Swap this one. me there we go so you can see and then this one if you just get your frame always get your frame look at this let's go back this one are we on oh so many let's show this one look 
So if you pop some gold splats on there, a thinking of you there, sending, hugs, crafty friend, mount it onto a card if you want to trim it down like we have done with this one. You know, have the courage to do and have play. Have a look. Really enjoyed it. Thank you, Tony. Need more practice. Too heavy-handed. Absolutely brilliant. Made a painter out of me. Oh, bless you. Practice, practice. Post your mates on our Eureka fan page. Super excited. It feels like you've all got a little bit of a result today. But don't be um, thinking that today's result has just happened, okay? You've had two sessions before today um, with grass strokes, buds, uh, different techniques. And what it is, is all of those techniques combined help you create what you've created today. If you've got great results, brilliant. If you haven't, it's going to take you a little bit longer. You're not going to be a born artist, okay? So what have I got to tell you about? Really enjoyed today. I'm so pleased you've enjoyed today. So have I. What else have I got to tell you about? So today I'm live at quarter past two with Aymala. Whatever's left, I'm not exactly sure. And I'm going to prep for that show right now. And then at four o'clock, I'm over on the Stamps By Me Facebook page to show you exactly what I'm launching on birthday week on Monday. So um, it isn't all as it seems if you have been cheating and having a look because I have more to show you. A lot to show you. So super, super excited. So four o'clock, Stamps By Me Facebook page. You'll see me there, probably looking a little bit tired by then. And then quarter past two today, I'm Ala, me, Carly. And I believe today it might be Lauren. Not sure though, you'll have to check. So whatever you're doing, have a lovely day. Lots of crafty fun if you're staying in. But if you're not and you're getting some fresh air, get some just go and have some fresh air and just have some fun, whether it be with yourself or just go and have a look at nature because it's all coming through beautifully. So have a lovely day, guys, and I will catch you all later. Love to you all, and we'll um, do our sunset next Saturday morning. See y'all later. Bye.